Okay, so in this experiment, we're going to be producing a metal salt. We're going to be producing copper sulfate by reacting sulfuric acid with copper carbonate. So that's going to make the salt copper sulfate, but we're also going to make carbon dioxide and water. So measure out 25 centimetres cubed of sulfuric acid. Place that into a beaker. Now we need to add excess copper carbonate. It must be in excess so that we don't have any acid at the end of the reaction and so we don't heat up sulfuric acid which would make fumes. Now we can tell that we've added excess because when we add the copper carbonate we get effervescence. So bubbles are produced and those bubbles are carbon dioxide gas. So if I add some more copper carbonate and we get more effervescence I know that the acid is still present and it hasn't finished reacting. So I can mix this with a glass rod making sure that all of the copper carbonate is reacting. If it stops effervescing, then I can add some more copper carbonate and see if it does it again. There's no more effervescence, so I think I've got excess copper carbonate in here. Now at the moment, this solution contains some powdered copper carbonate that I want to get rid of. So we're going to use a separation technique of filtering. So filtering removes a solid from solution. So here I've got a funnel and I've got some filter paper. Now we can fold the filter paper in a couple of ways. We can fold it in half and then half again and open it up like so. But we really want as much surface area of the filter paper as possible. So we can fold it in this way to increase the surface area and therefore increase the rate in which it filters. So I don't want the solid, so I'm gonna try and decant, which is another technique, the liquid across and just leave the solid in the bottom of this beaker. So there we go. So most of the solid is left behind. Okay, that's what we don't want. And then hopefully we're gonna get the liquid dripping through into the evaporating basin. What we've got here is some of the co filtered copper sulfate solution. So now what we're gonna do is the second process, uh, evaporate the water to leave the solid copper sulfate behind. So we're gonna place it onto a gauze, which is on a a tripod and heat proof map. We're going to turn our Bunsen burner to a blue flame and place it under to heat. To get the nice deep blue copper sulfate crystals we don't want to heat it completely dry. The blue crystals are actually hydrated copper sulfate. If we heat it too strongly we'll get white copper sulfate. So we want to stop heating when most of the liquid has been removed and then allow it to cool more slowly to leave those nice blue crystals behind. So you can see evaporation starts to take place, the water's been evaporated, and the liquid that's left behind will become more and more concentrated, so we should see a more deep blue color. We want to stop it just before it completely goes dry. So we'll see around the edge here, um, bits of solid crystals start to appear. So we can use uh, a glass rod by taking it and then dipping it into the solution and leaving to see if the crystals start to form, so it's not quite ready yet. Okay, so we start to see some crystals forming on the edge, starting to become concentrated. So if I remove the heat, then what we'll do is we'll leave that remaining uh, solution just to finish evaporating and leave our crystals behind.